United USA. Some strange fires going on out there in Boulder, Colorado. But what's really weird is they're being fueled by 100 mile an hour winds, which is extremely unusual. So yeah, here's a diagram of the jet stream. Uh, as you can see, it comes south down the west coast. It curves up by Arizona just above Mexico, comes back up and then goes east, right? So the wind is blowing west or excuse me, from the west, it's blowing east across the United States. Um, so, yeah, that's an example. So, I mean, it's it's normal, but at the same time, what we're seeing here uh, is a little bit different, and it looks sketchy. It looks like the, it looks like an energy is directed right here, right here. See that spot? It looks like there's an energy being directed right there. So, yeah, is that strange? Yeah, kind of. Is it normal? Not for 100 mile an hour winds, not for hurricane force winds. And this was being reported back on the 16th, and here we are on the 30th of December. And what's even more weird, we're in December and you got fire. As you're looking at information from the National Weather Service out of Boulder, Colorado, and you see the plume that's moving from the left to right of the stream. And uh, boulders just to the northwest and Denver's to the southeast of this line. I've driven that road. It's beautiful country. But that plume is 100 mile per hour winds and a forest fire. But it's a, the fire is going through the towns. There's, uh, we're going to kind of scan this page of the National Weather Service on Twitter and take a look at some of the information that's being sent in. But again, 100 mile per hour winds. So if you've got friends in this area, you uh, need to make sure they understand uh, what's going on here. There's a CDOT guy doing a great job, just jumping out. You can barely see the lights in front of us. More fire trucks just trying to get going. They're starting to block all the streets. I don't know how these officers are seeing anything. More fire trucks trying to get just anywhere. Fire trucks here. There's fire trucks kind of everywhere. When you look it up, Google tells you there's an SOS alert out there. Two different spots, two different fires. Anyway, check out this. Here. Can you give us any sense of the number of structures burned or homes burned yet? Yeah, unfortunately, I think it's going to be in the hundreds. I, I don't have any more specific than that. Okay, got it. Because so much has happened there, and uh, it continues to happen. Kyle Clark is joining us now, and this, sadly, is this scene near Davidson Mesa that we watched happen a few minutes ago. Kyle, this, I can't imagine watching this. Yeah, Tom, this is, this is heartbreaking. Uh, we're watching uh, the loss of what appears to be a number of people's homes at once uh, along McCaslin near Washington in Louisville. And you hear the booms and uh, the pops of things inside those buildings going up in flames. Uh, it's difficult to tell now because of the volume of smoke that's blown between us and the firefight. But with time, entire towns uh, go up in flames. Uh, Let's go back out to Denver 7's Bayon Wang. Bayon? I would have presume as the fire is starting to engulf this community, they're just double and triple and quadruple checking to make sure that there is nobody there. Again, we see, we're seeing a lot more police cars go up and down. We haven't really been air crews in this area, of course, a lot of them are probably uh, behind the smoke there trying to fight these fires as as, as more and more homes get engulfed. Uh, I can... that you can see right behind me. We're near a Vista hospital, the neighborhood right next to this hospital, which is about uh, uh, just a couple hundred yards away. It's uh, St. Andrew's Lane and Dillon uh, Street. Uh, you can see that. Weather Chief Meteorologist Dave Frazier on the line. Dave, can you just give us some context about the winds that we are seeing in that area of Boulder that's making it so difficult for uh, firefighters to contain these two fires? Yeah, hi, Alex. Uh, uh, thanks for taking my call. 
Yeah, we, we're dealing with uh, winds. We've seen peak wind gusts in that corridor of about um, 100 miles per hour earlier. Uh, about an hour ago, the wind gusts were running about 73. It's now at 66, so it's still a, a huge problem for fanning the flames there. Um, the wind is coming straight out of the west. So what that's doing is it's downsloping off the higher terrain. It's rolling at a faster speed, Alex. And right there between Highway 93 and the radar as well, guys. I mean, you can see it on the radar. The radar is picking up the smoke embers, and you can see the hottest part of it on radar. It's there up in the right just south of Louisville. Now, watch. I'm going to zoom in. Krugel talked about this. Now, for most of the day, the fire had been burning in this direction off to the east. But then see, watch the southern movement of this. You'll see it kind of go that way. Watch the yellow kind of propagate. So that's the northwest parkway there that connects with US 36. Superior is right over here. You can see there's Superior. Uh, Lafayette is here, and then there's the Broomfield area. So now you've got these flames kind of burning over this natural grassland. And then Evan pointed his camera, if you guys will. You remember when he pointed his camera to the left? He said he thinks there's another fire, possibly. Well, it's right here. You can see it just getting underway. It's right in that spot there. Now, this is pretty open here as you go west of McCaslin and south of US 36. Mm -hmm. So there's natural grasslands. And I think that's what we're seeing in some of the images on the right hand side. So probably embers got caught up in some stronger wind as the wind turned to the south. It deposited those embers on those natural grass. So there it is, ladies and gents. You see it. Um, usually, how the jet stream comes down is it comes down the west coast south down california up above like arizona nevada and then sweeps up over texas colorado right there you can see right there where it's kind of pinpointed but just as an example you know does this happen can it be normal sure but in this case i think it's highly unusual um and to have the combination of fires at the same time you have 100 mile an hour winds in Colorado, it seems extremely suspicious to me, um, especially the fact that we know that there is geoengineering and there is weather modification technology. Uh, it is a reality. It's not science fiction. Uh, it is real. And now we're living in that day and age. So I think it's something for everyone to think about. If you appreciate this video, please like and share it.